Online Media Solutions are offering free web design. Email hello at omslive.co.uk or call 0161 818 8423 for more details. Well, what a season that was. And to reflect on it, I put together a compilation of some of the best bits from throughout the season from my vlogs. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I hope that it reminds you of what a great season it's been and how great it is to be a blue. Not everything's in it, but you can see the individual match day vlogs for that, but these are some of the best bits. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Well, welcome to a, a new season, a new season of blogging, vlogging, radio, and columns in the evening news and all the other sorts of things that I do. Uh, the journey for this season, uh, hoping to emulate the Centurion season, I suppose from a city perspective, starts here in Terminal 3 at Manchester Airport as I prepare to board a flight to Chicago. This, remember, is in Chicago. This isn't in Manchester. This is Chicago. I've been in Chicago more than one of the nicest uh, city in the United States, especially in that period, in winter time. I know it's tough complicated. So the second leg of City's tour of Northern America, at least for this particular visit, it's to New York City. We're from Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, amazing. Great time. I love a bus today. This is a pretty special view too, isn't it? The Brooklyn Bridge. It's match day, the final match day of City's pre-season tour 2018 here in Miami, City played Bayern Munich tonight. So I've made it after my early start this morning, uh, up at 3.30, a flight at five to six. Spent all day in Kharkiv, it's not been too cold. Uh, seen a lot of City fans uh, enjoying uh, the cheap prices over here. Derby day, for me, it's the game of the season. This morning, I uh, woke up, saw throw, saw throw everything, it's like, I had a day, everything. A couple of tablets and a main owl. The score will be 3 1 for Manchester City. Sterling 1 and Aguero 2. You must have seen a lot of derbies down the uh, years. Well, I am 75 next April uh, and I must have seen 70 or 80 derbies. What's your favourite? The favourite was uh, the uh, 6 1. At Old Trafford. What's going on, you know? Uh, it's a pro some sort of a protest, I think. Yeah. Unbelievable, uh, isn't it? It's obviously the firemen are involved somewhere, but I don't know. It's, not, uh, it's not, nothing to do with the football tonight, anyway, that's for sure. So we're, we're, I think we're safe, all City fans, aren't we? With a bit of luck till tonight. Hopefully. Yeah. We're marching past now. Yeah, I know that we uh, have to get us, I think. You wouldn't normally, as a cricketer, have played it at Christmas. What, what do you think it's like playing at Christmas? Well, you could tell. Look at this. I've got everything on. I've got thermal vests. I've got my scarf, and it's, it's nobody's scarf. It's one from Marks and Spencer's. I'll be eight to six on Thursday. Oh, congratulations! So I've got birthday. some cats and buns. <laughs> Brilliant. The yeah. team have just given me a card. Fantastic. Are you old enough to have remembered Dennis Law playing for Huddersfield? I remember Dennis Law coming. And he had little glasses. It was uh, not much taller than I am now. <laughs> and it was very thin. Proper northern German town. Looking yeah. forward to the football. They're passionate fans. Well, on this sentimental journey that I've made to Gelsenkirchen for this game, I have to come here. Uh, this is the, the house or the building that my grandma lived in that we visited every year. Uh, for much of my youth. Das ist die Mannschaft, die zur Anzahl 2 zu 1 für die FC Schalke! was brilliant and uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what to say anymore. It's, it's absolutely uh, disastrous. What I call nosebleed territory. What's it like watching the game from here? It's, it's good. Um, I've been all around this stadium. I've been, um, I've been first level family stand. I've been Colin Bell stand, um, and I'd say for the type of football that we play, um, you get a great view of the game up here. You really do. It's a bad place to watch the game from, Joe, is it? No, it's not. Unfortunately, you've got to go out in the cold. So, but I'd rather stay in here and watch it. But it's a beautiful place to get to the game before it starts and then go out and enjoy the game. So I'm travelling from Washington DC, I'm originally from Colorado in the United States. Oh fantastic, you're the same, you've come same. over again, yes. what have you made of it? 
It was amazing. So we flew here literally for the Manchester game and it was a great first experience. So I had a great time. So it's the first time tonight that the repeat fixtures happened since the 15th of April 1970, which was the first football match, the first City game I ever attended. It was here at Main Road. This is what Main Road used to look like these days. It's been redeveloped and of course the stadium isn't here anymore. Can you remember the first time yes. you ever came to Main Road? What yeah, the like? first time I came to Main Road was with Swindon Town. We were, and when uh, there was the lowest gate of 9,000 people there. And we won 2 0 or 2 1, and that's the first thing. But I stood there. I sat there with Stan Gibson, the ground before the game, and I said, this is where I want to be. First memory of a game, I mean, Dad took me quite a few times before, but my first memory was Rodney Marsh's debut against Chelsea in March 72, I think it was. Um, I remember, we were in the Platte Lane stand, and I remember walking through the Platte Lane tunnel in the corner, and suddenly walking out and seeing the pitch and the stands and, and so on. And we sat on the bench in Platte Lane, and then Rodney Marsh and the team obviously came out, and Marsh posed on the pitch, had loads of photographs taken, and he became my first hero. I don't know why, my dad hated him, but I, I loved Rodney Marsh. And it was seeing silly stuff, like I remember look, looking towards the clip acts, and people were lighting cigarettes. I didn't know what it was at the time, but you could see these sort of little flashes of light where the cigarettes were, and it all just looked so magical to me. The manager, Brian Horton, the legendary producer and music DJ, Mike Pickering, and Ian Cheeseman. to Schalke is that my mum was born in Gelsenkirchen, which is the hometown of Schalke. Well that was something wasn't it? I'm not going to lie that despite the fantastic City victory which I really am delighted about, I have slightly mixed feelings at the end of that game because with my soft spot for Schalke it was hard to watch when it got to six and seven. I can imagine that one day when it's not quite as windy as this it's actually quite a nice place for the beach here in Swansea. One of the most famous people ever born in Swansea was Dylan Thomas the poet. This is what he said about his own town. An ugly, lovely town, crawling and sprawling by the side of a long and splendid curving shore. This sea town was my world. He also said that cold beer was bottled God. I bet you prefer that quote, don't you? Well, what do you think of this? Uh, I quite like the stadium actually. I'm not keen on this weather. My feet are so wet, I think I'm going to get foot rot by the time I get home. Normally I do vlogs on match days about City games, but tonight I'm doing a one about this film, The Keeper, which is the story of Bert Troutman. It's a film about someone who finds a new home in, in, in England. Uh, and you know has a family there and uh, uh, yeah it's a very it's a it's a very personal story um, about this um, yeah amazing um, uh, life that Bert Troutman has lived. Oh, they're about to beat me away with a sticky you know and that's uh, no as soon as I seen it it was about sitting it was about Bert Troutman and it was setting it in, in sort of Lancashire, you know what I mean? So uh, it was great, you know. Starting today's vlog here on the Surrey side of the River Thames, that's the Middlesex side where Fulham football ground is. And a week tomorrow is actually the university boat race between Oxford and Cambridge. And it seems very appropriate actually to be starting the vlog uh, describing the actions of maybe a two horse, well it will be a two horse race between Oxford and Cambridge when the title race now is also a two horse race, or so it seems, between City and Liverpool and another must win game. How many times do you go to a football match where you can watch boat races on the Thames right next to the stadium? Well listen, I've always wanted to come to the cottage and I missed it a couple of seasons ago so I'm glad I'm here today. They say the weather's always nice and that's one of the reasons why I'm out here not in the ground yet because I just can't believe what I'm seeing. We're here at Fulham and we're here to celebrate Manchester City versus Fulham and Bernard Halford. This is why I've got the scarves on here to support the Mr Manchester City today. What a star man. Um, God rest his soul. I'm that old. I knew Bernard Holford even before he went to City. I knew him when he was old and athletic, but he comes from my neck of the woods and he went to the same school as Gregor Palamine. I said on Twitter he was Mr. Manchester City. Kind, courteous man, generous to a fault, and City through and through. A great man, and the club's a lesser place without him. The closer you get, the more you, you want it, the more you, you crave it as a fan, don't you? 
so yeah, definitely. And do you feel the pressure of a quad? Not necessarily the pressure, I think it's more the excitement. I don't necessarily feel the pressure because if we do it, great. If we don't, we've been in this position, which we won't normally have been in, or no other team as that I can remember anyway has been in. So I'll just enjoy the ride. So now it's getting to this stage of the season, do you think the players will get nervous? I don't see why. Did you get nervous in the season when City won the league? I, I used to be nervous every game. Really? Yeah, well, it, it all depends which game it was, to, what the build-up was to who you were playing, to how nervous you got, whether it was away or home or whatever. But yeah, overall, Ian, we got the job done. Three points to three points with you win 6 0 or 2 0, and I'm buzzing with the result. Absolute nonsense. You've got ex pros who don't pay for a ticket in their life. You know, you've got working class lads who are trying to go to games all the time. And then I was talking to a Liverpool fan in work who genuinely believes the reason we've got empty seats at home is that Sheikh Mansour buys six or seven thousand season tickets to circumnavigate financial fair play and that's why there's no nobody in those seats when it comes to the uh, to, to match day deluded doesn't even come into it so i just think it's one of those where we're so good we're so far ahead of the rest in terms of where we're at off the field and on the field What's the stick they beat you with? Empty seats. To be honest with you, I'd play in front of an empty house if it meant we're going to be here every time, winning trophies. I'm fine with it. It means nothing to real City fans. We support the club through thick and thin. We're here when we can be, and that's all that any fan can do, really. Geez, uh, today means everything to me. My dad made me a blue. I was born in 1968. My name's Colin. I was named after Colin Bell. My dad named me after Colin Bell. He sadly passed away. His funeral was last Friday. I've got his, I never ever wear colours on my lad and today I've got my dad's shirt on, right? And that's how much it means for me today, Cheezer. That was his shirt from 99? Yeah, I sat next to my dad in 99, that end, 2 nil down, everyone was leaving, me and my dad stayed and this is my dad's shirt that I'm wearing today. Westminster and that would be where Big Ben is and the House of Lords are back there as well and I just happen to know one of the Lords, Lord Dave Goddard of Stockport. So you're a big City fan? I am yeah. You must be busy for you at the moment in the House of Lords. Have you got a chance to actually think about tonight's game? Well I've been thinking about it. I mean Brexit's a big problem but I think the quadruple is a bigger problem but I think one will fail and one will pass and I think the one that passes uh, as a manager called Guardiola and not me. So what have you made the ground so far? Well, it's all right, it's empty at the moment. We'll find out how good it is at the end of the game. It's impressed walking towards it, but you get inside and it's a bit like a corporate mausoleum. Everything's glass outside, people sat down at tables having a three course meal. So you come in here and it's, I've got to say, it's not best ever. The toilets, it's about that deep in we, or, or maybe they've had a burst and they need to call a plumber. But let's hope the performance from City tonight is a lot better than my first impressions of the stadium. The best teams lost here tonight, that's a poor first side. They're not long balls all day, they don't play any football. That's not so great, we've been beaten tonight, but we've got great enough chances to beat them next week. What are you just saying to one of the lads, literally a minute before, I hope we don't get done with a sucker punch. And again, the goal was a bad goal to concede. Thursday this week I was lucky enough to be in a talk given by Dr Gary James, the renowned historian of all City Matters, who reminded us, and he did the talk on Thursday in Manchester, that this is the 125th anniversary of the birth of Manchester City, which had been formed with St Mark's and Ardwick, but then became Manchester City this coming Tuesday actually when the documentation was signed. And he also reminded us that City won the FA Cup back in 1904. Do you know where they won it? Here, at Crystal Palace. The site is where the National Athletic Stadium is now, right behind me, which is about a mile and a half from Crystal Palace's uh, Sellerhurst Park Stadium, where the Blues are playing today. Tough game, tough place to come to. Four trips to London in two weeks. Fans are tired, players are tired, but we're more than capable. I'd love to see his name, the strong squad. It's a big weekend, isn't it, Ian? It's, uh, Chelsea could do us a favour this afternoon. 
I, I'm always worried when Fernandinho is not playing. I just think he's such an influence in the game. Turning now to the team of Crystal Palace. Fan noise, without doubt, makes a difference. Um, I heard Pep say in the last sort of 24 hours that he really wants the fans to turn up here and make themselves heard. Um, I'm not sure you should really be asking your fans to make yourself heard in the quarter-final of a Champions League. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's such a tough game, it's a really tough one to call. Um, I think, I suppose that's why everyone's really excited to be here. Thinking tonight, Andy? 1-0 down, aren't they going into it, but I reckon I'll go City 3-1. I will try to be even louder than I normally am, because I am normally loud, but I will, because Do you Pep wants that us. Will make a difference? Yeah, because Pep wants us to go for it, doesn't he? So we've got to, we've got to be 12 man, we've got to make a difference, definitely. <laughs> Are you convinced that that was offside then? I mean, it's a tight one, but it is. But I feel like it's one of those that, I don't know. I feel like it, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy head, but it would have been, give, been given. It wouldn't have been given against us, maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a bit gutted. My head's not straight. You don't know what to minute. say no. anymore, do you? No. Well, as the fans leave here expressing their emotions, uh, there's not much I can add, really. It's uh, it's one of those days when uh, you've just got to take it on the chin. Well, after the drama of the other night, Sean, what are you expecting today? Because the emotions were so high, weren't they? Yes, the emotions were so high, and it's a difficult one to call because to replicate that level of football uh, and the mental, the mental, uh, what the players had gone through is so much and it's so draining. So I still expect a, a really good game, and yeah, it's hard. My heart and head is, is still going for City today. Obviously, wanting Liverpool to win the Premier League, that the worst thing for Liverpool happened the other night, City going out. In fact, getting beat up uh, by Tart Lane, if it's still called that, and then obviously winning the other night but not getting through is not good for Liverpool. You know, after what happened on Wednesday, how the psychology works, do you feel more optimistic or less optimistic? I personally feel just depressed at the moment still. <laughs> I really do. I just want today, we have to win today, just to feel uh, to maybe, you know, so the season doesn't entangle. I just feel like that's my overriding. I haven't been on social media, I haven't looked at anything. I just want to focus on this game. Big game today. You think City can do it? Well, it's going to be tough because, uh, you know, the, they, they played against Tottenham this, this week and it was a tough game, so I'm expecting a, a tough game again. Exciting, but I think the officials need to give City more justice. Exhausted. <laughs> After Wednesday, yeah, oh. exhausted. Oh, God. Thrilled now. We're still back. Yeah. We're above Liverpool again, yeah. so that's yeah. good. It's two and a half hours before kick-off of the Manchester derby, and there's an absolute deluge of rain coming down. There's a thunderstorm. And I wonder if this is going to affect the game tonight. I don't mean that the game's going to be off or anything like that, but if it continues to rain like this, or there continues to be wind and thunder like there is now, will it have any bearing on the outcome of such a significant game? I don't know if you can hear the rumbling of the thunder in the background, but it certainly puts a different complexion on this. And I believe it or not, I'm actually stood in the shelter as I start this vlog. I think we'll win the game. I think we're better than United. I think we've got a better team. I think we've got a better subsequential squad and I think we've got a better coach and uh, our supporters <laughs> will be well heard tonight. I think we're better all round. So that's the point you just bought here at Old Trafford? It is indeed. It's not really a pint, is it? Not really, no. How much did that cost you? Five pounds. Yeah, I mean, we get emotionally involved, you know. Uh, we're fans ourselves ever since boys, so, you know, it's, it's nice to see it from the other side in the stands, so I was pleased. Nah, I'll just show him. I'll, I'll, I'll try and prove to him that I'm better than him, so, because we have obviously a lot, of, a lot of stick with each other. He says he's better, I say I'm better, so, no, nah, obviously, I just play, play for everyone who's, who's making the effort to come out, and, you know, hopefully we can win. Very nervous, very nervous, yeah, really nervous. Have you Are seen you... him play a lot? Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't make it any easier. Really nervous. Come, she comes tonight, every game. Hmm? I say she comes every game, Ian, so uh, I don't know why she's nervous. 
Uh, she's been with football since I, you know, since she was born, so I don't know why she is. Are you dressed like this, by the way, to every game? Every game. Wow. Every game. That's some commitment, isn't it? Yeah, I try to do a different design every time as well. So. Well, yeah. I'm impressed. Thank you. Enjoy the game. <laughs> and you. Nervous again. <laughs> confident. I know, yeah, but uh, I just feel the, uh, the win at Old Trafford was fantastic. I think Pep will have a man look today and I think we'll get a result today. Nervous? My cardiologist has advised me not to come to any more matches. Although I did see him a couple of weeks ago at a match, so he should talk. My heart is not made for this. <laughs> done. I'm done. God, honestly, stressful. Stressful from minute one to the end of the day. We're getting that bit nearer now. Oh, God, no. I don't think I can do it. I'm going to end up like doing, dead at 30. <laughs> Done. I know exactly how you feel. Tense. Uh, I've been, been a Man City fan for four years. And it's, um, you know, it, it's come down to this. Liverpool have had the, the luck of the green. So it's all about, it's all about tonight if, we, if, we, uh, be, if we're professional and, uh, and we play the way that we, we play, we'll, we'll get through today and we'll get through next, uh, next Sunday and hopefully go on to win the FA Cup uh, the following week. City forever. Wow. What an absolute... Screamer, screamer. I was the same as you, I spoke to you at half time. Don't like the look of this cheesy, don't like the look of it, but second goal in two years. I mean, no one's gonna stop that in the world. Look at this place. Final day. What do you reckon? Um, hopefully, get it done and dusted before half time. Two or three and at half time and a 5 0 win. It's my 50th, 50th birthday. Um, I think City won the FA Cup 69 when I was born. So this is like full cup, full circle. And it's my, uh, my 50th today. So yeah, we've come down to watch this. Um, my nerves are like. It's actually worse for me than that season against QPR this way, because this time I actually understand it. I was a lot younger then. to another great season. Uh, I've been vlogging from all 38 league games this season and it culminates in this one, a victory here at Brighton by four goals to one. I've had so much positive reaction from people who've contacted me personally or on social media uh, and I've really, really enjoyed being the Manchester City official vlogger. And one of the players who played in that team, Bill Leavers, is here today. Uh, so let's see what he remembers of that day, a long, long time ago. Well, what I remember about it was the time I myself was injured and, I didn't, and nobody expected me to play. And I said, I'm going to play. If I have to play with a broken leg, I'm going to play. I'm, with all my heart, I want them to win. But I'd much rather they be, that they beat Liverpool. Because Liverpool drove me bloody mad. Really? Well, when you think about it, they're squawking now, aren't they? About something else that the players were singing. And yet they got the damn cheek in 1956 to turn our coach over outside the ground. People don't realise that. We were all on the coach and there were about 40 of them pushing it and it damn near went over. So you two, last season, pre-season in Chicago, yes. you put me up 
Yes. And now here you are at Wembley. Yes. So. By the way, we're staying at your place tonight. Really? I don't know if we told you that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Positive. Can't Positive. wait to do this. Positive. 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 So you, you actually did that. I did. You presented it to Vinny. I did. You could I... lift the third trophy for the treble today. Well, I think you're wrong there, Ian, because there will actually be four trophies. People have overlooked that. It's four, not three. Today, then? Almost. Snapping Mickey in his tenure playing five side football, but telling the Spanish hospital there's no way you're operating until I come back from the final. Unprecedented domestic treble. No one's ever done it, no one can ever take it away from us. The most amazing season we have ever had. Best team in the land. It's only 6-0! Oh, guys! Jesus! I, I, I put a bet on the quadruple, right? And I know we didn't win. And I know we didn't get to the Champions League. Who gives a sh Who cares? Oh, fantastic. Oh, Absolutely oh, fantastic. It's in my heart, it's in my heart. It's in my heart, Jesus. I know it all. We won it all! By the way, Paul Pogba! <laughs> Sanchez! Oh, he's in a wheel! Set it! Set it! I'm from Salford, by the way. <laughs> it ruined my life for years. Not no more. Cheers, Mr. Cheeseman. Manchester City. We won the shot. Good night, Robert. Be seeing you. Hopefully, I'll be back to do it again next season. But how do they follow this? How do they follow this? Not only do they win all the domestic Jesus, Jesus, and all the trophies, but they do Jesus, it in style. Jesus, Thanks Jesus, very much for watching. Jesus, See you at the parade. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So now I've run down from one end to the other, from the start to the finish. And now waiting the arrival of the bus down here in Cathedral Square, or very close anyway, to Manchester Cathedral. What a crowd behind me. Um. <laughs> but guys, um, uh, first, um, you know, first, I want to say. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to everyone. 11 years at this club, what a journey we've been on. What a journey. And it's an absolute thunderbolt from Vincent Company. And that could be a goal. That sets City on the way to defending this Premier League title. And so the Nissan goal of the season for Manchester City, as presented by Fernandinho, goes to Vincent Company. These guys on my left, on my right, deserve all your love. Every, every day of the week, every day, every single year, they work hard. But this is the way I want to leave. I want to say thank you. I love you, Art. I love you all. I'm out. It's the champions, aren't we, mate? You know what I mean? Who Man United? What do you think of what Vinny had to say? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. He's win the league more times I've seen us win the FA Cup. And we've been going since the 70s. You know what I mean? It's one of them that, and it's more trophies to be won, you can hear it there. Vinny knows he's left it in good hands. Yes, cheers, man. Absolutely sensational. You know, formidable. Hey, hey, hey. Look at him, look at him. Uh, no, great day. If you've seen these videos, if you've liked these videos, and you'd like to be a sponsor yourself, then get in touch. I'm always looking for new sponsors, particularly for next season. But thanks very much to uh, everybody for watching. Thanks for everybody for contributing. 
for all the lovely comments that you make. See you again next season, I hope. Isn't it great to be a blue? In fact, I'd say it's formidable. Remember, online media solutions are offering free web design. Just email hello at omslive.co.uk or call the number 0161 818 8423 for more details.